I have been talking about GraphQL a lot on this channel since it makes working with microservices so much easier. I think it's time we get our hands dirty. Hey guys, it's me, your tech bud, and in this video, we'll check out how you can set up a GraphQL API for your microservices. Before we start, this channel just crossed the 500 subscriber mark. All this love and support I've been getting from you guys is something I am really grateful for. I promise, I'll try harder than ever to keep bringing you these videos regularly and try to make sure that every new video is at least a tiny bit better than the last one. So this video aims to be a practical guide. We'll start with quickly going through the environment and check out the tools we'll be using. Then we'll move on to explore two scenarios which we saw in the previous video on how we can use GraphQL. The first scenario is using GraphQL as an aggregation layer. Here we introduce a GraphQL engine before our REST APIs in order to promote microservice decoupling. For the next scenario, we'll be using GraphQL as an internal data API which will help us abstract all our data sources behind a unified API. Don't worry, I'll be guiding you through setting up these use cases from scratch. Also, if GraphQL is new to you or maybe you want some more insight on the theory aspect, check out this video. I've gone into a lot more detail here. I'm pretty sure it will be of help. Time to get introduced to the tools we'll be using today. Let's start with SpaceCloud. SpaceCloud is an open source GraphQL engine for your databases and REST APIs. To be fair, it does a little bit more than that. For example, it can create REST APIs for object stores like S3 and abstract away Kubernetes and Istio, making all of these tools so much easier to learn and adopt. But we'll be covering that another day. I've also gone ahead and prepared the services we'll be needing for today. But feel free to try using SpaceCloud for your custom REST services. It should work just fine. Another important point is that we'll be using Docker Compose to set things up. So make sure you've got Docker and Docker Compose installed. Last but not the least, all of this is present in the GitHub repo we've made for you. It also includes the instructions and steps I'll be doing so you can easily follow them along. Link to the repo is in the description below. Man, that took like forever. Okay, it's time to dive right in now. I've already got the GitHub repo clone, so let's start with spinning up the environment. Simply navigate to the right directory and run Docker Compose up. This might take some time to fully set up, but once it's done, you should be able to check out the active Docker containers by running Docker PS or opening up Docker Desktop. You can see that we have a couple of containers running. Two of them are our REST services, a user service and a post service. We will be creating a GraphQL API on top of these. We also have a Postgres instance running, which will serve as our primary database. The remaining containers are for running SpaceCloud. Coming back to our services, each one of them exposes a couple of endpoints. Starting with the user service, it exposes two endpoints. One to return all the users, like what you see here, and the other to get a single user by ID. The post service has similar endpoints as well. The first one is to return all the posts, like this. Then we have an endpoint to get all the posts belonging to a single user. And finally, an endpoint to get a single post by ID. You may have noticed where I am going with this. This is a typical example where data from two services will have to be joined pretty often to populate a single screen. Instead of coupling those two services together, we'll be using GraphQL to join the data on our behalf. Time to configure SpaceCloud to do just that. Let's open up SpaceCloud on localhost port 4122 slash mission control. To start using SpaceCloud, we need to first create a project. Let's call this my project. Next, it asks us to add a database, which we can skip for now. To create a GraphQL endpoint on top of a REST service, we need to head over to the GraphQL section and add something we call a remote service. A remote service is a logical reference to an externally running service. So let's start with the user service. The URL will look something like this. 
User service is the host name Docker Compose generated for us, while 8081 is the port we are running this service on. Next step is to register the endpoints of the user service. So let's add the get users endpoint. Punch in the URL path. Make sure the request method is get. And that's it. We can add the get user by ID endpoint in a similar way. However, the URL for this endpoint accepts a path parameter. Here's how you do that. What we are saying here is that the user ID parameter will be coming from a GraphQL argument. This will make a lot more sense once we see how to write a GraphQL query. But before that, let's add all the endpoints for the post service. So let's add our next service, punch in its URL. Looks good to go. Time to add the endpoints now. Let's start with the get posts endpoint. Punch in the URL, make sure the method is correct. And that's it. Let's do this for the other endpoints as well. Next is get post by user ID. This one will take a path parameter as well. Looks good. Last one is the get post by ID endpoint. Let's add this quickly. The URL. And that's it. That's all the config we need. Quick recap. These were the different endpoints that we just added. Have a good hard look at it. This is all the information that we will need to write their equivalent GraphQL queries. Now let's head over to the fun part. Let's query these APIs using GraphQL. Let's quickly head over to the API Explorer. This is where we can try out our different GraphQL queries. Let's start with writing the query to get all the posts. We'll start with writing the endpoint name, followed by the arguments if any. And finally, we add a directive representing the service name. That's pretty much it. We can now fire this query to view the results. And there you go. We just generated and fired a GraphQL query without writing a single line of code. Now let's proceed with getting a user by ID. The structure of the query is exactly the same. First comes the endpoint name. Next is the arguments. If you recall, we have a user ID argument for this endpoint. And finally, we write the service name. Let's quickly run this query. It works. Now let's move on to the part we all have been waiting for. Let's try to perform a cross service join by joining data we get from the post service with that of the user service. For this to work, we will start by writing a query for getting all the posts. Let's say I'm only interested in the post ID and the title of that post for now. To get the user's information, we will need to query the user service once we get a response from the post service. So let's write the query to get the users here. Now the question is, how will we get the user ID parameter which we were supposed to pass to this endpoint? You can do that by simply writing get all posts dot user ID. This will instruct Space Cloud to use the user ID field returned in the response of the post endpoint. I know this query seems to be a bit weird, but let's try and run this. As you can see, the result is exactly what we expect it to be. We got all the posts along with the user's information. So this is how you can aggregate data from different services without having to write a single line of code. Next stop is to use GraphQL as a unified data API. The idea here is that a microservice can use the GraphQL API for all internal communication instead of using REST or talking to the database directly. This allows us to achieve complex patterns like joining data from services and databases. Fortunately for us, SpaceCloud supports this use case as well. So let's see how we can do that. Let's try to join the data we are getting from the post service with some data from the database. For this, we'll have to first register the database in question. So head over to the database section, hit add a database, select Postgres, modify the connection string to look something like this. Edit the schema name to public and that's it. We can see that a table already exists in the database. So let's go ahead and track it. 
This action alone configures Space Cloud to automatically generate GraphQL APIs for us. The easiest way to explore these queries is to check out the sample queries page. Let's try out the read query. Hit the play icon and now fire the query in the API Explorer. There you go. This is equivalent to firing a select all query on the post stats table. Let's add a slight variation to this. Let's introduce a where clause. We'll add a condition on the ID column to get the statistics of a single post. Something like this. Now comes the moment of truth, joining the result from a service with the data in a database. We'll start with writing the query to get all the posts. Now, similar to a cross service join, we'll fire the database query in the selection set of the post query. As you may recall, we'll pass the get all post.id field as an argument to our database query. This looks good. Let's fire the query. And we have our result. It seems like the post stat is an array. Let's fix that by adding the op equals to one argument. Fire the query again and perfect. Finally, to stick it all together, we can write a single query to get all the posts along with its statistics and the user's information. And you can just fire this query. Isn't that awesome? Feel free to play around with this and let me know if you have any feedback. Before we call it a day, we need asked a really good question in the comments regarding the performance implications of GraphQL. The thing is, SpaceCloud performs a ton of performance optimizations on your behalf. For example, it automatically switches to native database joins for SQL databases. For other N plus one queries, it resorts to using the data loader mechanism. What I'm trying to say is, even though GraphQL has a certain loopholes here and there, Using the right tool can make your life a hell lot easier. We can make a complete video dedicated to performance and maybe even security if you want to. Just let me know in the comments below. I think that's it for this video. Let me know if you want more practical guides like this one. Also, a huge shout out to Sharad Rakoti for helping me create content for you guys. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. It really helps me a lot. And like always, I am your tech bud here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.